Ladies and gentlemen, if you are already a frontlawn faithful, you will know what I'll be doing right now. It's the evening time. It's an evening of fine Jaipur weather, and I'm pretty sure we've recuperated ourselves from the heat. So I'll come to the center of the stage as much as I can, and with the energy I have left in me, I'll say a namaskar to all of you. And what you have to do is send the same energy back to me with a namaskar collectively. All right? Let's do this. Namaskar. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Detol Banega Swast India. We are delighted to introduce Indian crafts, traditional and the contemporary. This session is presented by Etsy. India's indigenous crafts. are renowned the world over for their exceptional beauty and nearly immeasurable range they also comprise a vital sector in the country's economy as among the largest generators of employment and are responsible for a significant share of the country's exports but how do artisans survive and craft industries respond to modern developments changing infrastructure means of production demands trends and designs CEO of Amrapali Jewels Akanksha Arora fashion designer Anavila Misra politician and author Smriti Zubain Rani technology executive and entrepreneur Himanshu Vardhan are in conversation with journalist and author Seema Goswami in a session on the crafts of India and the path ahead I will now one by one cue in the speakers and welcome them on stage Akanksha Arora serves as the CEO at Tribe Amrapali and has been instrumental in creating the verticals of Amrapali Jewels Private Limited and launching Tribe Amrapali's website and retail stores under her leadership they have created a global footprint as a leading jewelry brand with successful deployments in over 6 countries wow she has quietly transformed the landscape of modern jewelry design with captivating originality and ensured that Tribe Amrapali retains its heritage and ethos while creating contemporary designs ladies and gentlemen akanksha arora yeah we can have it louder yes ms anavila misra is credited with innovating linen sarees and bringing them into fashion spotlight thereby creating a new vocabulary for everyday luxury over the last decade she built her brand from one weaver to over 200 weavers and craftsmen with sustainable employment As a designer and champion of Indian craftsmanship, Anavila is guided by her core beliefs of mindful creation and being one with nature. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Anavila Misra. Mr. Himanshu Vardhan is a technology executive and entrepreneur. He is currently the managing director for Etsy in India, and his key focus is mobilizing and empowering the creative community in India and connecting micro entrepreneurs. from different parts of the country to the world through the hc platform ladies and gentlemen mr himan shuvardhan ms seema goswami is a columnist and author her long running column spectator in hindustan times brunch has a vast and dedicated following of her several books woman on top became a best seller and was translated into several languages her political thriller race course road was published in 2018 to critical acclaim Her latest book Madam Prime Minister is a pacey thriller that follows up on the events of Race Course Road. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Seema Goswami. Ms. Smriti Zubain Rani is an Indian politician who was elected to the Rajya Sabha representing the state of Gujarat in 2011 and re-elected again in 2017. In 2019 general elections, she was elected to Lok Sabha from Amethi and she is currently the Union Minister for Women and Child Development. She was the Union Minister for Human Resource Development from 2014 to 2016, Minister for Information and Broadcasting from 2017 to 18, Minister for Textiles from 2016 to 21. She is India's youngest Union Cabinet Minister in the government and the first woman to hold office as the Union Minister for Human Resource Development and as the Union Minister of Textile. And I am starstruck saying this, ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Smriti Zubain Rani. Thank you, 
a decorated panel. I am not decorated. I will leave you now in their company. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Hello, Jaipur. It's great to see you again in such large numbers again. Uh, without uh, wasting too much time on introductions, because I think that's already been done, we'll dive right into this session. Uh, Smriti ji, if I can start with you. You were textile minister for a few years, and you were one of the most successful textile ministers in terms of what you managed to do with the ministry in a short period of time. Today, we are discussing contemporary arts and crafts and how it resonates with the modern world. In your experience, our textile tradition, does it appeal to the younger demographic or is it something that is still limited to older people who appreciate that? I think how you reposition our craft is what ensures a market for it. So I'm seated with people who have repositioned it and done it to complement the taste of young India. And many have done it in such a fashion that Indians who adapt to that new methodology in fashion or textile do not shy away from their eclectic heritage. So, for instance, I've had the privilege of working with Anavila. Um, I remember somewhere in the early 2000s, it was considered a bit down market to adorn a sari and call yourself a young professional. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, not many would have a conscientious conversation about the different weaves and you would never find a mention of it in fashion magazines. Absolutely. The fact that sari became fashionable and that the Indian consumer rediscovered olden weaves, I think is a compliment to the rising fashion strength or the textile strength of our country. I also feel that there is a huge imposition on the youth to know what our craft legacy is. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Hmm. You will find a consumer only if there is knowledge about the product. You will have an appreciative consumer only if they value not the amount of raw material that went in, but the centuries that went the to craft. keep that craft and that crafts person going. And I think that is which is yet a challenge that needs to be met. I'm hopeful that the more and more we see young forces in the craft uh, enterprise, I'm of the opinion that yes, there is a huge traction amongst older Indian, middle-aged Indians, but yes, slowly but surely, young India is also embracing the craft legacy of India. Anavila, if I can take this to you, uh, you work with saris, you've developed linen saris, which was quite an innovation in its way. You work with weavers to do that. And you're also, I think, consciously trying to appeal to a younger demographic. Would you like to tell us what that journey has been like? Has it, have you had bad days, good days? What's it been like? So, uh, you know, it's been very exciting, uh, the journey. Uh, the thought of contemporizing the sari is where my journey started. Uh, as Smriti rightly Can I just say your sari is gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. So as Smriti rightly said that, you know, there was a time when uh, saris were limited to a, a festive wardrobe or a wedding wardrobe. And the younger generation, uh, so to say, would feel that, oh, I don't want to look like my mother wearing a sari. The Benji touch, no? So... <laughs> Uh, because and especially the handloom saris, yeah. because they came with a certain kind of border. There is a there was a language which was carried on for you know many years, as you rightly said. So there was to make them more desirable uh, to the younger generation. I think that onus is with the designers because if there's it's not desirable, how do you want that girl to kind of you know she's looking at these amazing uh, advertisements from all the international brands, which where the product actually looks very, very desirable and you want to own it and wear it. Yeah. Now, how to make sari desirable? I think that was the challenge. Contemporizing the weaves was a challenge. And then that's how I thought of linen, working with actually the traditional handloom. So the mix of both created something which was novel and desirable. And that worked. In, and, in that a, worked. and that worked. In. And that worked. And a lot of younger mm. girls have started coming to us, to the store when, you know, I'm at the store uh, uh, and they say that, you know, your saris and we saw, you know, and 
also the presentation we do so there was a campaign which we did all the sarees for the summer were with um, sneakers yeah so they were I like saw that. Yes, yeah, yeah. So we were like you know now we can wear them yeah. and the blouses were loose and they yeah. were comfortable they were more like tops so i think how we what product we create which is comfortable but also how we present and make it more desirable absolutely yeah. akanksha i think that brings me quite effortlessly to you you've been working with tribe amrapali uh, which is the younger label for want of a better term a more contemporary label of jewelry which appeals to younger people i have a question for you does your traditional amrapali customer also buy the younger collection or is it a completely different customer that you're dealing with um so we have uh, not only is it a new customer base the existing amrapali customers are there and then we've also opened up the customer base to a younger generation a new generation who is tech savvy and who likes to uh, shop online they love social media because now it's not about uh, what you're wearing to a wedding but it's about what you're wearing to which event and not repeating the jewelry so taking a selfie and uploading that on instagram yeah. so we try there there it, it's very easy it gets easier for them to do it because it's price point jewelry and uh, there's also a huge variety where it, it's weddings as well as um, yeah. western outfits yeah. and um, i think that uh, it's the younger generation who eventually then converts into an amrapali customer so if, for example if the mother who's worn amrapali on her wedding day the daughter who's working 18 19 year old girl will eventually become that but in the meanwhile it might be intimidating for her to go into a fine step into a fine jewelry store so for that we have tribe which a can be online or now we're opening in malls which are like fast fashion and affordable so they can quickly just buy what they like and you know wear it to their so, so when you're designing for a younger customer in tribe yeah. amrapali yeah what are you looking for what what makes it different from a traditional amrapali design so uh, when we started the whole the whole idea of tribe came about when we started uh, social i was 21 when i got married and got into the business so social media was an in thing it just started then so we opened our amrapali jewels page and uh, like created a page on um, uh, on facebook my husband and i and we would upload take pictures of jewelry and upload that on facebook from a blackberry at that time we had blackberry phones and we would get um, messages from customers and followers all over the world saying oh this is lovely where can we buy it do you have a store in melbourne or do you have a store in texas and we would say oh sorry you know you our store physical stores are only in india and that's when the idea struck that why don't we sell them through facebook so we were like we are okay to ship it to you if you transfer the money and we can send it to you and insurance and all that would be covered so we started doing a lot of sales through facebook and that's when i realized that we need now to digitalize and have an e store but with um, amrapali the, there were a few challenges which were the the price point the shipping customs yes. taxes import duties all of that insurance so it's a completely different retail so market com- also all correct completely so that's how tribe came into place we thought we'll do a base metal jewelry for younger affordable people okay. and that's how it it came into thank place. you uh, himanshu now that we're talking about e-commerce and you're the man behind hc in india uh, you were telling me earlier that because of covid and the pandemic suddenly online sales have shot up and artisans are actually using the internet to kind of sell their products would you like to tell us how that market is developing and how you see it developing over the next decade or so sure technology uh, has really had two big impacts in last uh, in last 2 3 years or last few years uh, in this domain first of all it has truly democratized uh, access to craft forms and also can uh, provided uh, access uh, to artisans to sell their products uh, to buyers across the world directly so over the last 2 3 years we have we have mobilized and gotten a lot of artisans who are directly exporting earlier they were exporting through middlemen through traditional uh, uh, retail channels and they were able to come online and directly sell to buyers uh, outside of india so it's true democratization that has happened uh, and access has has been able to kind of uh, uh, both ways for buyers and for sellers as well the second big thing about what technology has done is around storytelling you know uh, craft is uh, is as much about story as it is about the product itself it's a story behind the maker the process the tradition uh, the legacy uh the, you know it's it's a lot about it's it's a lot about the narrative behind it as well technology provides that uh, uh, that platform 
for everybody to do that storytelling in a very beautiful way you don't need to have access to big agencies to create that story you can do that from your phone with a small video or through clicking pictures uh and i think that has had uh, an absolutely sort of huge impact in getting a lot of small uh, uh sellers creative entrepreneurs and craft people who did not have access to structured way of doing that uh, that storytelling and that has really made a difference it has made a huge difference i mean globally we've grown uh, uh, we've grown that uh the the amount of transactions happening on uh, for art and craft products by more than 100% during pandemic mm. uh when a lot uh, you know large part of the the traditional marketplace got impacted uh, there was a surge of hundreds and thousands of uh, of craft people coming online and uh, and setting up shops and like selling online and, and the beautiful part about all of this is that it doesn't really require much capital mm. uh, and um, in last few years with uh, uh, with efforts like digital india and with the internet penetration being there on every mobile phone it has yeah. literally taken down yeah. the cost of starting to sell online to few rupees very true. a few hundred rupees very true uh, smriti ji i have to ask i have a problem buying clothes online i need to touch them i need to feel them and when people talk of online revolution and how everybody is ordering stuff online i have to say that i still have some reservations what do you feel about that well i'm a part of that gang <laughs> <laughs> i think that if you truly embrace the magnitude of indian craft you best enjoy it in person absolutely um i also think that those consumers who've gone online out of pure compulsion do do a great service to crafts people who have digitally embraced commerce but i also feel that um when you look at the expanse of what business opportunity lies in the field not many people know that in the entire pandemic it's only the craft export that did not take a hit in fact it grew by 1% oh that's interesting and we exported craft worth 1 lakh 30000 crores wow per year wow that's amazing and that happens because there is a visual impact of what we produce as a nation with regards to our arts and craft i also feel that there is a buzzword of sustainability and sustainable consumption across the world and it is fascinating how the world is now waking up to the fact that india from a perspective of craft and textiles was always predominantly sustainable so we are finding new markets especially where there is a conscious buying of sustainable products we're also finding a wider market where people want to conscientiously buy products from female crafts persons or female manufacturers now let's take an example of uh, carpets jaipur rugs is a fascinating story yeah they give um, raw material to female weavers they do not give them a definite design but those weavers in rural rajasthan they will weave uh and some of them have gotten awarded in EU in Germany yeah. and uh, that is the latent potential of indian craft which has come down from one generation to another which is yet to be leveraged uh from a digital perspective and i think apart from the consumption challenge from people like you and me who want to you know touch that weave and i call those consumers very brave because they have been um cases where they believe that they were sold a hand loom but it turned out to be a power loom yeah um but at least that consumer doesn't shy away from the entire industry uh, wants to continue to engage but i also think the other aspect of digitalizing the entire atmosphere from the craft perspective is this we have still not taught our people how to protect the ip of the design mm -hmm. yeah and uh, that is a very complex issue because if you look at the internationalization of our craft a lot of foreign companies would want uh, a niche to be carved out by a particular design house which does not necessarily copy a design or semi copy a yeah, design yeah. but is very original to what they are trying to sell and when i talk about internationalization of uh, let's say a craft or a weave or a type of textile like anavila i'm sorry i'm just giving an example of somebody who's seated right next to me so anavila would do sarees not just with a loose blouse um she would do it with a jacket yeah which makes it a good buy for contemporary indians but also finds an international market absolutely now if i'm looking at amrapali um 
what is the service that they bring apart from doing base metal affordable um, jewelry if they create their own mini museum of designs of artifacts that is again a facet which i'm sure you you have because i know i've seen it uh, <laughs> that is again a service because we are myopically looking at craft right now from one consumer or one organizational purchase perspective craft has a dynamic impact in our society it can give birth to um tourism a fascinating kind absolutely yeah not only tourism which is homestay in the artists uh, residence but also tourism that is extremely enamored by let's say museums so anokhi has a museum amrapali has yeah. a museum yeah. so that gives us great potential and lastly i think that there's a social consciousness in terms of buying again i'm going back to anavela she would do linen work in murshidabad in bengal yeah and one sees the impact on that local economy Com on the community of the yeah. intervention of that particular design house and when one starts mapping it one realizes that a social sector effort also finds a reflection in this economic activity and that is why i think we do a great disservice to craft if we just myopically look at it from a perspective of just one purchase yeah one more question before i move on do you think that indian textiles their image has changed a lot in the last decade earlier we were seen as a kind of place that did export hubs we made for other people it was not necessarily the best quality or whatever but over the last decade i think india is become a more of a quality destination do you see that in your experience if you've ever visited the maison in uh, france mm -hmm. you would know that blown up glass from muradabad Mm -hmm. gives tough competition to venetian glass yeah and uh, if you look at the metal work in uh, the entire uh, parisian mm -hmm. adventure with craft uh, where a lot of indian architects go to buy mm -hmm. stuff that is made let's say in muradabad yeah uh, you'll be fascinated as to how much of the metal work which is contemporary not the normal tamba uh, pital but actually contemporary wire work mm -hmm. or metal work comes from muradabad so i think that yes you are right why we see this whole mini revolution in the craft business as the home furnishing business grows in our country mm. we should not only limit the craft impact from a jewelry or a sari perspective we do a great disservice to the home furnishing business which is a huge market because we see equal amount of embroidery yeah. on our cushion covers absolutely we will see it on our bed linen and i think that is the other strength but when you talk about an international market what was our challenge from a sustainable fashion or a sustainable home furnishing perspective our colors used to run yeah and people used to shy away from handloom because everybody used to purchase handloom let's say 10 20 years ago they would say rang ji nikal jata hai ha bilkul ek wash ke baad mm. and people wanted to buy something that they could sustain let's say at least for 2 years as a yeah. product so when the government uh, launched and the prime minister was insistent let's launch the india handloom brand let's certify organic colors let's certify it so that companies that want to work in uh, collaboration with weavers know that this is becomes then the quality hallmark and when that started happening i mean i have seen um a shirt making company do a handloom shirt with mother of pearl buttons wow and directly alan solly did it yes directly in engagement with the weaving community So yes markets do get facilitated more and more businesses come and stand behind the weaving community or the crafts community yeah. if these elements with regards to raw material and the supply chain are facilitated great and now will i if i can take this to you uh, you work with weavers on a one to one basis in murshidabad where you develop linen for these sarees was there resistance that you faced when you went with this concept or was everybody very receptive to it from the beginning So uh, the first linen sari was developed Just in put your mic close. The first linen sari was developed in the Fulia region uh, of West Bengal. Um I think that was the only region where the weaver had a little bit experience with linen prior to my going to the cluster. They had they were uh, making uh, stoles which were uh, very small in their width for Japanese buyers. So it was easier for me because they understood the yarn but to ask them to put the yarn on a sari width was a challenge and i had to take uh, the responsibility of the whole experiment on me and they were ready and open to work on it and you said if it didn't work you would pay for everything i yes, yes. So i gave them an advance and i wanted to take that chance and in fact when the first sari came out 
the weaver was like you know let's stop it who's going to buy it <laughs> because they were so used to uh, making very soft cotton and silks in west bengal that a coarse material like linen and i assured them i said i'm going to buy all of them it's you know my uh, my order to you and from there to now when linen if you go to that region every child knows what linen is and what linen sari is mm. so the point is you know like smriti was now bringing on the whole thing of heritage and craft there is such a deep knowledge uh, practicing knowledge of crafts in our rural clusters uh which is a juncture of social economic and cultural uh, you know merger that sometimes looking at crafts we are so enamored and we are so uh, you know taken blown away by the beauty of craft you know and its association with heritage that we kind of don't see the potential of employment that lies there you know Absolutely. which is huge huge right now it can actually transform a community apps and Absolutely. because you know we are second largest only to agriculture so just imagine if all of that knowledge from ancient india is tapped into a uh, potential sustainable employment what we are talking here but do you find in the market is there a resistance to paying more for handloom because it is more expensive see people are slowly understanding you know do you so the question is is a weaver we we just glorify the weaver we glorify the artisan at certain events you know khadi day everybody is going to wear khadi and handloom day you know and, and post effort, selfies on instagram efforts are being made you know <laughs> government is making that effort and everybody wants to be a part of it but we glorify that artisan and weaver on that particular day but do you understand when you haggle with a artisan or a weaver or a person who's or a yeah. designer who's working with an artisan and asking for a particular price for that product you you know you're kind of uh, talking like you're talking to a laborer you know and that dignity of work that heritage with comes with that skill set we are kind of overlooking all of that we are no, never going to bargain at a chanel store uh, you know or a mess store no frankly you shouldn't bargain with laborers either because yeah. that's also a skill no, set yeah them, you yeah. know so <laughs> what we do when we tell an artisan ki you know and at i've seen at hearts when mm. artisans are selling their own wares to the consumers and consumers are bargaining they don't understand that one sari it takes months to weave on you know this sari which Absolutely. i'm wearing is looking plain because the jamdani weave is not in terms of a floral form or raised form it's just a criss cross which is you know contemporary and you will see it and you will feel that it's a plain sari i'm not going to pay this price for that sari but do you know that the weaver has sat on that loom for 2 months to make that yeah, sari you have to understand you that you know and we say that we they have to continue the onus of continuing that art and craft and skill lies on their shoulder but we are not ready to pay them for that yeah that you doesn't know? make sense so how will their kids go back to that craft so i think the consumers need a lot of consumers are understanding but the consumers who actually talk about craft and art and our heritage need to understand and value crafts uh, you know by showing respect towards the artisan absolutely yes. akanksha how price sensitive is your market your jewelry market for younger people do you find that people are not willing to pay above a certain point so the idea for tribe was to keep it price point and to have it affordable uh, to a, and appeal to a larger audience as we were talking about and the topic of our conversation is the future of art and craft so uh, adding uh, the way we can do it price point is say for example if one karigar takes uh, two weeks to make one piece of jewelry by hand but the same karigar with the same skills uh, and we with the help of added technology and di uh, digitalization and machinery can make 200 pieces in 2 weeks so that is 200 customers instead of one customer so we can have that many more stores for tribe that's the idea and then we employ that many more people in those stores and even our packaging which is uh, handmade um, bags and uh, cloth pouches which we give with the jewelry that as well gets more business so everyone it's a win for for everyone for everybody, so yeah. keeping it price point works for everyone as well and then the karigar gets um, finds it worthwhile for him to do that because he gets more pieces to make and then his younger generation feels like it's worth his time as well to yeah, join yeah it's it's a worthwhile job to do to, to join the learn jewelry making which is now mostly the younger generation is moving to white collar jobs yeah so they find it worthwhile if they have enough revenue 
to come into the business and learn jewelry making by hand so like smriti ji was mentioning your museum yes. do you use it like an educational tool to explain to people uh, what goes into the making of your jewelry yes absolutely it's actually the country's um, largest private uh, silver tribal jewelry collection which was started uh, which is my father in law and, and uncles uh, they they collected over 40 years and these are the pieces which they thought were too precious to sell or part with they just kept collecting in boxes and finally they realized that this is enough to sort of have a museum so uh, the entry for the museum is free for students it's for them it's actually the the whole purpose was for them to give back to the society and so people can come and see all the different techniques of uh, jewelry making and how it was amazing how back then a lot of things were so luxurious in in made by you know in silver and things like toothpicks made out of gold and diamond which we cannot imagine that yeah. was true luxury at yeah. that time so if if you go anybody is here from outside jaipur or even if you live in jaipur do visit her museum and it's a great experience uh himanshu to come to you i mean we are talking about artisanship we are talking about craftsmanship uh how how have you kind of with etsy tried to help people to kind of increase their sales to kind of improve their markets you were talking about the global market and how you're selling to people abroad would you like to tell us a little bit about that yeah sure so uh, i think one of the things that i would a couple of points uh, that also smriti ji mentioned first of all uh, at etsy we 81% of our micro entrepreneurs who are selling on etsy out of 5 million globally 81% of them are women uh, and uh, what we have seen in last two years as the number of listings have increased from india from 2 million to about 4 million a very large percentage actually uh, has come from women so so you know th that that's a very key so point so that's women empowerment yeah. at play as well yeah absolutely uh, the other uh, aspect is also around i think artisans we uh, in five years i've probably met thousands of artisans urban areas rural areas in different parts of india and what you have, what i've realized is that a lot of times there is a tendency in us to be patronizing to be uh, to the artisan about design about different aspects i've realized that they are they are really good at what they do they don't need that they just need more enablement in terms yeah. of sort of business skills digital skills yeah. so uh, we created uh, created this creator enablement program which was like a one week mba which talks about how to price your product how to think about marketing and creating a brand for yourself i think that has that has had a huge uh, huge impact in terms of uh, a lot of uh, sort of creative sellers from varanasi weavers directly setting up their shop on etsy and doing that storytelling so so do you think there's enough digital penetration in our country now for this to work i think we so in terms of access to devices and internet there is enough penetration uh, but obviously there is a little bit of a you know there's a learning curve that we and this uh, artisan community will is is going through what very interesting thing that we have seen is that uh, you know artisans who have been doing this for let's say 30 40 years there there is an inertia to adopt it immediately even if uh, uh, covid was a big push to them what we have seen that the second and third generation who might not be taking up the art and craft form they are uh, they are helping their uh, parents and grandparents digitally to come online on platforms like etsy so initially we started out really just engaging with the artisan directly and then we started to engage with the with the families itself their their second that's and third that's the story generation. of every family you know kids teaching parents how to get digitally savvy that's the story of every family these days uh, but smriti ji when we talk about Ita indian crafts and indian arts what is your favorite thing that you have shopped for recently well i believe there's a merchandise section here and i'm told <laughs> that if i'm disciplined throughout the two sessions i've been a part of i can go and indulge though i've been fairly warned by my husband that on my government salary i cannot afford much <laughs> well you can you can certainly shop at amrapali and anavil <laughs> that is a one place i can definitely not shop at both of them are very expensive but i think that um that's the other challenge that is the fear we induce in people that if you are buying craft it will be very expensive that is not the case i think that if you go directly to the weaver you will feel and you will yourself when you consume recognize the huge difference in the price point i have myself shopped only from hearts and seen a design which let's say a designer would want to weave on silk is a primary design that the weaver would uh, weave in cotton 
Mm-hmm. So one needs to also spread the word around that yes, if you want to not uh, let's say afford a designer, and if you increase the consumer base, you need to ensure that the middle class buying capacity of a country is leveraged to support that craft. And one has to recognize the reality that middle class India is not going to pay two lakh rupees for a sari. Yeah. So how do you keep that support to that craftsperson going? you do that by taking the effort to reach out as he said mm-hmm. to a crafts person digitally somewhere yeah we all believe that crafts people are only reaching out digitally on an e-commerce platform uh, there are many who are leveraging whatsapp facebook instagram and they are doing so with elan yeah and if we particularly and my appeal would be reach out to the weaver in some of the most precious crafts which they claim is dying for instance they said that the patola now has only one weaving family yeah. which is behind it but the minute that consciousness uh, was socially embraced i suddenly find that there are four five different families trying to revive their not craft, only craft yeah. but also their business capacity yeah. so the minute and what is heartwarming is that indians know that this is dying like i remember when i went to goa there was only one kunbi sari weaver so even if you put the money from the government behind it what do you do when the knowledge is restrained to yeah. that one human being yeah so i think the other service we can do and it is mercifully a part of the new education policy as well is that children who are school going i remember supw classes in school yes. where they would tell you to do needle work which uh, is not the case today uh, we are so compelled to make sure that our child is so digitally connected mm. that we are not connecting our child to those out on skills. basic skills of handcraft that were a part of our uh, learnings and not necessary scholastic learnings just family yeah. learnings yeah. so i think that when i remember one of my greatest joys was to go to the eu and see an indian female doing thread work on just a patches of cloth yeah and i said why are you doing needle point only on a patch of cloth she says for me this is something that my mother taught me in himachal but it seems that people here would want to buy that patch to put it on a wedding gown wow so there is a lot of uh, context that you may not know but your craft can have so i believe that the greatest success indian craft will have or the rescue effort will be done by middle class india and also i think it's worth making the point that it's better to buy one good thing rather than buy 10 cheap things you we've know? had the legacy in our families where a mother is giving forth uh, a sari or a piece That's of yeah. textile or a piece of craft the issue is that the generation you're giving it to how many of them junk it <laughs> no. how many of them appreciate it yeah. or refurbish on sari and say and your mother literally has her heart in her mouth because they're cutting through that banarsi and say mummy ki pant achhi ban jayegi the mother is almost collapsing so i think that it also is about uh, the older generation recognizing that yes they will embrace that craft and that weave but they want to see it in a contemporary fashion contemporary for their own way. use yeah. but like i said if you want the indian textile craft tradition to thrive middle class india is where the answer is great okay with that we'll turn it over to middle class india anybody has a question please raise your hand the gentleman over there uh, right in front right here so we have a lot of fashion for women can you put the mic yes yes uh, we have a lot of fashion for women we have nothing for men no group captain if i remember <laughs> that you are a group captain yes, correct ma'am. <laughs> yes so uh, i'm apologetic sir with all due respect to the men in the audience i did speak about the allen solis shirt which was yes. hand woven with uh, mother of pearl buttons please do not in any way fashion yourself as a male victim of fashion <laughs> but but should you push it uh, it's 50% of country's population you know uh, you could have a whole new market No, Especially no. Let me compliment you for your color combination, firstly, <laughs> I... and how spiffy you look. But like I said, do not portray yourself as a victim of fashion. Men have enough brands, enough consumption. In fact, many a times they and all the ladies here will agree they tend to take more time to shop, <laughs> more time to get ready. 
and they, they don't shop thought. enough beg your pardon they don't shop enough <laughs> okay we'll take another that question they're doing the shopping uh, there's a gentleman over there in the same row where you're standing raising his hand hi uh, i just wanted to ask that there are many uh, big designers we have heard of uh, in uh, recent times uh, so uh, many a times if we are talking about uh, middle class india so they cannot uh, uh, afford those designers so what is the uh, way that they can also because those designers are portraying indian uh, tradition in uh, in a very, very good way and uh, the other celebrities and everybody are also uh, uh, encouraging people for those kind of dresses but how can the middle class india afford those dresses and okay, those kind you. of designs thank you anavela you want to take that so you know you're talking about uh, the popular designers and the celebrities who are wearing those designs but if you actually do some research you will see in the last one decade we have so many homegrown small brands who are creating products uh, ethical products sustainable garments beautiful fashionable uh, pieces which are very affordable explore instagram you will find many people there also I I also I'll, look out yeah. for the local heart Hello. That's where people congregate. I'll add to that. I think Anna Villas. You know, I've been following her design for a long time. I mean, you know, I've seen that a lot of young designers have been inspired by her, with her aesthetic and revival of a certain kind of linen sari to then come up with maybe linen saris that are. So there are a lot of them. So I think there's a large purpose that it serves of inspiring a generation of. designers to create products uh, in different price points you just going to have to look hard to find cheaper alternatives is basically what they're saying right <laughs> i think the the cause for celebration is that those options exist yes yeah you know uh, there is this young designer lady uh, from uh, kolkata poroma she does and uh, when i first saw her work she said i only specialize in blouses and then i try and do sarees oh wow it was very different <laughs> yeah. uh, an approach uh, as a designer but i have seen most of her work is cotton based uh, most of it is contemporizing bengali weaves and designs and all affordable so i guess you need to look out in your city for a local heart where weavers come together Uh, and also to these young budding designers you will find plenty on instagram and facebook okay we'll take another question uh, at the back there's a gentleman raising his hand <laughs> good afternoon my name is harshil little louder please my name is harshil good afternoon to everyone just like everything is getting modernized should we modernize every heritage craft yeah but uh, just uh, uh, machines are good at work and also cost efficient productivity is more but can't we keep some crafts as it is that's why the handloom reservation act prohibits certain articles which are to be only made by hand and i think that there is a differentiated market between those items that are machine made and those which are handcrafted what i said is a great mercy is that now you have those options but as consumers you have to be conscious of what you're buying so that those who sell machine made stuff under the guise of it being handcrafted do not stifle your potential to consume what seriously needs your support which is the handloom and the handcraft industry of our country okay we'll take another question uh, if you go right at the back in the back row there's a gentleman with his hand raised hello check i think i'm lucky enough today to get a second question uh, uh, hello ma'am ma'am uh, hi colonel how are you absolutely fine it's an army man doing asking a question on craft ma'am uh, my wife she is a fashion designer she holds a brand with name of pakhi that's my daughter's name i just want to ask in the world in the time where instagram and you know social media is so prevalent uh, where you where you put on a dress you click it you put it on a net it's old so where uh, now it with the time the, the handicraft or the handmade dresses are not able to compete uh, with these uh, machine made where you put it on click it or you don't never look at it again whereas our uh, uh, dadis or our uh, moms sarees are still being kept safe with in a, in a you know uh, proper uh, iron yeah. box 
so how 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 to make it more competitive okay Because thank is, you uh, this is what is coming up more important okay anavila uh, you want to take that so uh, you know i would just like to bring to your uh, uh, you know again uh, what himanshu just said a little while ago that uh, promoting craft and handloom also has uh, you know you need to create a story you need to tell the story and when you tell the story of a piece of a sari or a product or a garment or a jewelry piece made with love with you know uh, generations of skill set going into that one product i think it holds immense importance and much more than a machine made uh, you know fast fashion fast you because that's also necessary in today's market but you know the storytelling for the craft is very very important and something which is mindfully created i think and i feel is always mindfully consumed akansha you want to add, add that also uh, in today's time and today's generation most of us now do realize that you cannot wear one outfit just once or one piece of jewelry just once yeah. so in fact the top bloggers of our country are doing posts dedicated to restyling one outfit or one It piece has to of be jewelry in fashion. 10 different ways exactly so wearing a choker with a dress wearing styling it with a sari then styling it with a lehenga that's what they do or wearing it on their head as well yeah that's what lots of bloggers are only posting and pushing yeah. that content forward i think that's a major force of trying to do sustainable fashion yes, yes. yes. we'll take another question the gentleman there who's already standing making it easy for us thank you ma'am <laughs> my question is for madam you know, smriti mirani can you put the mic closer okay. to okay ma'am aap 5 saal tak rahe the textile ministry ke andar but ma'am covid ke baad mein kya hua 2021 se government ne kya kiya 5% ke slab mein tha textile ab wo 12% ke slab mein aa chuka hai aaj main t-shirt pehen raha hu ye ma'am indian brand hai par ek made in vietnam hai हमारा मार्केट बांग्लादेश और वियतनाम की तरफ क्यों शिफ्ट हो रहा है क्यों ये मेगा पार्क जो आपने डेवलप किए वो क्यों नहीं जो प्रोवाइड करवा रहे थैंक यू मैम थैंक यू फॉर थैंक यू एक तो मुझे खुशी है कि मुझे मौका मिला कि आपके पास जो गलत जानकारी है उसको मैं ठीक करूं एक्सपोर्ट्स वेंट अप बाय फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ टेक्सटाइल दैट्स स्टैंडर्ड बिकॉज जब आप एक्सपोर्ट करते हैं तो आप जो लेवीज और टैक्सेस देते हैं वो आपको रिफंड मिलता है तो एक तो 6000 करोड़ रुपया ऑलरेडी जा चुका है मार्केट में दूसरा जब आप बात करते हैं मेगा टेक्सटाइल पार्क के वो अभी इस बजट में अनाउंस हुए हैं तो मुझे पता है कि आप थोड़ा रिसर्च करके आओगे मुझे आज स्मृति ईरानी से ये क्वेश्चन पूछना है लेकिन थोड़ी रिसर्च में त्रुटि नहीं होती तो मैं और बेहतर जवाब आपके दे पाती दूसरा जब आपने कहा कोविड में क्या किया सरकार का अपना एक मार्केट प्लेस है जिसका नाम है जेम अब तक इन दो सालों में भारत सरकार और प्रदेश की सरकारें जेम पोर्टल के माध्यम से सामान वीवर और आर्टिजन से खरीदे इसके लिए दो लाख वीवर्स और आर्टिजन को इस प्लेटफॉर्म पे ऑनबोर्ड कराया जहां पर सरकारें सीधा उस वीवर या उस आर्टिजन से सामान खरीदती हैं जो आज तक हिंदुस्तान में कभी हुआ नहीं था और जहां तक कि आप स्लैब की बात करें उसमें तो अनाविला ही ऐसे ऐसे सर हिला रही थी कि गलत वो रिवर्स हो गया था रिवर्स हो गया इसलिए अगली बार स्मृति ईरानी को अटैक करना हो थोड़ा सा होमवर्क करके आना Okay, we'll take one last question. There's a lady in the first row. Can you give her the mic? She really wants to ask the question. <laughs> uh, good, good evening, ma'am. So my question to you is: Mic closer to your face. That ma'am said, Smriti ma'am said that she also can't afford the brands. Mm. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, like I can't too. I'm broke. <laughs> But This what I'm wearing, I got it uh, because I saw somebody selling a sari on Instagram. <laughs> That's why I kept telling Colonel Salil that you know, <laughs> Instagram is the savior for money. I cannot afford an Avila. I have to literally depend on her benevolence. <laughs> <laughs> ma'am, we are just sailing in the same ship there. <laughs> okay. Do you have a question? Yes, ma'am. So my question to ma'am is that why aren't like I know the story which comes behind that weavers are doing so much of hard work and then the workers come along and they put us put up a show of like creating just one product. but being a student if i want to buy something i can't i don't think that's that's a fair assumption especially no, ma when ma you have there should be something okay, we'll that just, we can uh, buy too My can we just i think why can't can you let her answer affordable? please yeah, i okay. think that what e-commerce platforms and social media instruments like instagram and facebook have done is to project to you affordable fashions depends on the raw material uh, how affordable that particular textile or that craft is 
today we are proud to live in a day and age where forget not only your kurta pajama or you know a t-shirt but even bags come with embellishments which are reflective of our craft legacy so i think that if you do a little bit of uh, research in fact i'll be happy to give you a few instagram sites where people sell <laughs> stuff for 500 bucks akansha you want to uh, add something our earrings on our website start at 400 rupees so if you skip a cup of coffee at starbucks you can buy a pair of earrings for yourself <laughs> okay that's a good note to end on thank you everyone on the panel that was a really interesting discussion and thank you for being such an engaged and wonderful audience i'll hand it over to you now Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I know we have a lot of questions to ask, but I'll let the lady because she's taking the effort to shout. Yes. Wait, wait, we're getting somebody to come to your Maybe, rescue with a mic. Just give her a mic. Ma- no, no. Yes. Hello, uh, ma'am. Am I audible now? Yeah, just very so, quickly. Yeah. Uh? Yeah. So one thing, uh, when we ask these questions, uh, and this is to you, six men were asked, like. everybody has raised their hand there was a woman sitting in that column there was a woman sitting in this row there was a woman sitting right there you didn't ask one yeah, but you i have a, you have a counter question and ma'am then like ma'am also, i'm not i'm sure you must have missed it that the moderator here is yeah, a lady yeah, I, she's no, calling up that was too her that was too oh, sorry i'm but sorry but it doesn't help the female cause when you attack the female moderator no but ma'am <laughs> the question okay uh, Ah, uh, go yeah, ahead with your question. question. Don't use your gender as a crutch. Yeah, yes. No, but my question also comes to my gender. So I am an NAFT graduate. Yes. And I graduated in 2016. I left the chance to meet you. You were there facilitating all the awards. So I have been traveling through India, buying arty crafts from there. But the problem which I see is a lot of women are in business where they build, but they don't get a platform to say it on. So where, for example. I was in Odisha, Patta Chitra. Can you get to the question? Since you wa- are lambasting are... the female moderator, uh, you uh, as the female potential need to show the men in the house that you are articulate enough to get your question in two sentences. What are we doing for women in tech when we say we want women to come to this forum? Women are in fashion, but where do we see women? Like all of you, like there are four women there sitting are, out there. There are women the on the board. I think that you've done a great compliment to females on this platform okay. by attacking yeah. us. But I'm happy to say and, this. I know. No, Harsh, uh, allow me. So let me say this: when you talk about women in tech, how do you define that nomenclature? Women in tech is it tech innovators, tech owners, or tech consumers? All of them. Well, let me say this, young lady: we have had over two crore women made digitally literate. in this country since you graduated out of nift those are the ones who come forth now and consume or for that matter not only products but also information digitally secondly today india in terms of stem graduates has over 45% graduates which are female yes tech based companies which are owned by women are only up to 5% but one of the main reasons is that people who invest in tech based companies they ensure that men get more of that money 35% less money is given if it's a female founder but i think that instead of lambasting everybody else you have a living example here in anavela she did not first embrace technology she first embraced the craft she first embraced that weaver in a little village in west bengal she's a nift graduate and i'm very proud to say that And, thank you and maybe like last one second so you talked about pata chitra and a platform go and search pata chitra on xe and see how many He's sellers how many is e-commerce platform but go and search for pata chitra on twitter on facebook or even for that matter on instagram or any other e-commerce platform that is already available but that doesn't answer your question i think the question that you had asked the entire panel is this how do you have more and more women in tech you did not ask how many women enterprises which are technologically enabled can emanate from the field of craft so i think we do a great service to the female potential by posing the correct question okay thank you guys thank you for that i hope that answers your question ladies and gentlemen that was indeed a wonderful session lots of engagement and we thank our panelists for their in, for their amazing insight into the issue that we're facing right now uh and we request them to accept a small token of our love and appreciation indian crafts 
traditional and the contemporary Akanksha Arora, Navira Mistra, Himanshu Bardhan, and Smriti Subhanirani in conversation with Seema Goswami. Uh, we also thank Etsy for presenting us this session. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we come to the end of the fourth on ground day of the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival protected by Detol. I would like to thank all the sponsors associated with the festival. Etsy, Amarujala, Business Standard, The Week, Sakal Today, New Indian Express, Embassy of Italy in India, plus the Istituto di Italiano di Cultura, the JCB Prize for Literature, Danik Bhaskar, Red FM, LIC, the British Council, Hawthorne Literary Retreat, Embassy of Ireland, ABP, Chumbak, United Nations, the Royal Norwegian Embassy, Blue One Inc., Escorts, Hero Future Energies, Australian High Commission, Culture Island, plus the Embassy of Ireland, Detol Banigaswast India, Amazon India, Rajasthan Tourism, Embassy of the United States of America in India, HarperCollins, Value First, Department of Women and Child Development, Government of Rajasthan, Embassy of Iceland, Ikank, Embassy of France, Fortis Hospital, One India, Daily Hunt, USPTO, ISTAD, Government of Rajasthan, Srishti Manipal Institute of Art, Te Design and Technology, Mensa, Penguin, Bank of Baroda, Viaggio, Jan Mikalski, Mahindra World City, P-Box, High Commission of Canada, Bira, VFS, Rambag, Bottle Opener, Hotel Partner, Edelman for the PR, Ku, Launchora, Airtel, Clarks, which is our festival venue, Leela for the Writers' Ball, Rajasthan Patrika, Trifed Jaipur, Royal Hermitage, and Airtel. Ladies and gentlemen, see you all tomorrow for the final on-ground day of the 15th edition of the Jaipur Literature Festival, protected by Detol Banegaswast India. We hope you've had a wonderful festival so far. See you all with the bright Jaipur sunshine tomorrow, which will soon turn into a lots of heat, which will cool down in the evening. We'll have all shades of Jaipur for you tomorrow at this amazing, amazing festival. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you.